right, Maisie, enough of that. Hello, Space Cats, it's me, Jules, and welcome to another Draw Along With Me. I am definitely benefiting from cracking open the pencils and the paints and drawing something just whimsical and magical. If this is the first time we've met, well, how do you do? Nice to meet you. I'm a children's book illustrator and author. What do you do? Really? You drive badgers to school? I didn't know there was such a thing. You're probably aware at this time of year, our little squirrel friends are busy trying to find things to pack away for the winter. So this week, I'll be helping one with his pantry. And if you think we're just going to be drawing acorns, ha, huh, think again. This is going to be a pantry festooned with the best olives and sourdough and cranberry jellies. Yes, this squirrel is quite the dandy. Shall we? Sometimes I film my intro and outro a week before I film the painting. And when I'm editing the two together, sometimes I wonder just how much sugar I've consumed before I filmed the intro. Hmm, very really enthusiastic entrance. When I was making this picture, I realised there is quite a structure to the creating. Let me explain. When I was doing the line work for this, I started with the element that was the most important. And in this image, it's the squirrel. I didn't want to start anywhere else because I didn't want to impinge on that little space that I'd made for the squirrel himself. Next, it was important to get the structure of the shelves and the ladder in. They are next important so that the perspective of the room shows, even though my perspective is deliberately not true to life. It is necessary for all the little bottles and the pots to sit on. And what I'm trying to get across is, when you are inking your page, choose the hierarchy of importance and try to stick to it. In this picture, the jars and the bowls are easily rearranged or changed, so they, they come last. I'm drawing those ones last. And the shelves and the straight lines are necessary for us to understand what we are looking at. I hope that kind of makes sense. When I came to put in the little nibbly food bits, I looked for some inspiration from other real life pantries on Pinterest. And I totally forgot that I was gonna put in olives and sourdough bread. So you'll just have to imagine that. But the one thing I definitely wanted to make a central theme was the lighting. Originally I just had a bare light bulb hanging down, but I left that out in the final piece and just had the fairy lights hanging from the shelves. And now to the painting, or in this case, colouring. Again, structure. 
I started with the darkest areas, the insides of the shelf units where it was at its darkest. Not only does this show the depth, but it also throws the jars and the bottles forward and allows me to add shine from the fairy lights. If you're wondering what I'm using today, it's a Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen, the hard tipped one, for the line work, and Derwent Ink Tense water soluble pencils for the colour. If you've seen any of my other art videos, you will surely have seen me use these before. The pens are really popular with bullet journalers, and that's how I came by them. Yes, I am an avid bullet journal fan, and honestly, I wouldn't be able to organise my life without one now. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back to my earliest videos and you'll find a year's worth of journal plan with me films, and that will begin to explain bullet journals. I came across the ink tense pencils in my local art shop and I just randomly decided to see what they were like. I've used Derwent pencils before and I've always found them to be great quality so I bought four colours. They are not cheap, I think they were £4 per pencil, that's about five US dollars in today's conversion. Of course you can buy them in a set and that makes it a bit more cost effective. Once you have carefully added your colour, being intuitive about the pressure you want to exert, you can use a paintbrush with clean water. And make sure you don't drip any water because it will start to dissolve any pigment it comes into contact with and that might not be what you want. Once you've dunked your brush in the clean water, then dab it on a piece of kitchen paper to get rid of any excess water and then just paint. The water really does make the colours saturated and come alive. You honestly wouldn't believe that you've got that colour there waiting to emerge with a little bit of water unless you'd seen it before. You need to make sure that one colour is dry before you go on to the next one. You can either leave it to air dry and if you're in a warm climate that might not take long but if you are in a wet country like the UK you can use a hairdryer. Just give it a quick blast to dry the area a little bit and then you can move on to the next colour. You can either add all the colours you need for one particular area like I've done on the apples all before you hydrate the paper or you can add colour while the area is still damp or when you've already put a colour down and you've dried it and then you can add a colour on top of it. It really is just a question of trial and error and using your inner know-how. I did spend quite a lot of time imagining what was in these jars and bottles. Was it something sensible like jams and pickles? Or like in my story Dogstar, was it eyebrows, left ears and dog teeth? Hmm. I try to imagine what would be in my pantry if I had one. Well, I do sort of have half a pantry and it's stuffed with jars of nuts and seeds and jam I made from the myriad of berries that I grow in the garden and my sourdough paraphernalia. I also like to dry herbs, hence the bottom shelf of the squirrel pantry. And now I am wishing I had grown and dried more thyme because I've almost run out of it and it's only December. Gah, note to self, grow more thyme next year. After the initial dark areas, I was colouring a little bit more randomly. The only thing that really matters is the illumination from the fairy lights. You'll probably have noticed that when I did the dark blue, I left a little bit of space around the bulbs of the fairy lights. And now you can see why. I added the colour, I think it was carmine, more intensely in the middle where the bulb would be and then lighter in that surrounding area, giving the effect of a pink light glowing. A 
Another trick to tell you about when hydrating the pigments of the pencils, if you have a lit area like I do on some of the pots, put your clean water and brush into the white part of the paper and brush towards the pigment. And that way you aren't taking pigment into the white paper that represents the highlight. Make sure you clean your brush regularly with clean water. Now to the squirrel himself. I started out with the tangerine colour but I did realise that he needed a bit of shading to give him depth where the light was hitting him. So I think I used the chocolate brown for that and I did use a dry pencil on dry paper but with the tangerine underneath it that I'd already wetted. I actually dipped the pencil in the water to get more of a saturated colour for the bulbs. Anyway, all in all, I think it turned out okay. Another image for my huge portfolio of work and, more importantly, I really enjoyed doing it. Next week I'll be cozying up with a cat. I mean, you know, as a picture. I'm off to fill my larder with mince pies and then systematically eat the whole lot. I will see you next week, so long as I don't get gastritis again. No, 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 no. <laughs>